This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Well, good morning. It's Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. All right, let's get three really bad stories out of the way first, then we'll get on to some of the better stuff. The Anne Arundel County Police Department is searching for a black male about 18 to 25 years of age in connection with a robbery at Knife Point up in Glen Burnie. On Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m., right in the middle of the day, a 16-year-old male was walking between the Glenview Apartments and the Target store on Nolpack Court in Glen Burnie when he was approached by two male suspects. One of them displayed a knife, held it against the victim, and stole his property. The two suspects fled. Responding officers were unable to locate both of them, but they were able to get a hold of one of them, and he's been identified as a 17-year-old charged as an adult from the 800 block of Greenbud Lane in Glen Burnie. The other suspect is still at large, and as I said, he is described as a black male, 18 to 25 years of age, 5 foot 9, medium build, wearing dark clothing. Down here in Annapolis, the Annapolis Police Department is investigating an armed robbery that occurred early yesterday morning in the Admiral Oaks neighborhood. Officers were called to the 400 block of Captain Circle, which is in the Admiral Oaks community. An adult male said he was standing outside of an apartment when a male suspect with a baseball bat threatened him. This all went down at about 4 a.m. The suspect forced the victim into the apartment where another adult male was sleeping on the couch. The suspect demanded property from both of them and ended up taking a jacket belonging to one of the victims. He did flee the area. The victims did call the police and the police were unable to find a suspect. And a follow-up to a story back in the middle of January. Annapolis police had put out a missing person report for a Catalino Perez de Paz, 35, of Annapolis, who was last seen on January 12th down at City Dock. Unfortunately, the Maryland Natural Resources Police have discovered the remains of Catalino Perez de Paz and are investigating his death. They said that they discovered the remains on March 1st, but they did not say exactly where they were discovered or any of the situations surrounding it. We will follow up with that. Their investigation is continuing, but a sad ending to a story about a missing Annapolitan. Anne Arundel County Public Schools are trying to be a little bit more transparent, which has to be a good thing. They've developed a new app that is available both on Android and the Apple ecosystems. And this will allow people both from within the school system as well as outside of the school system. With this app, you're going to have access to school safety hotlines, school menus, school calendars, athletic broadcasts, board of ed information, library media catalogs, and much more. If you're a parent of a student, you're going to have access to the student parent portal as well. One thing that's kind of cool is that users can follow as many schools as they like. So if you have children in multiple schools, you can pick both of them and you can receive push notifications from those schools in case there is something going on at one and not the other. If it goes on district wide, everybody will get the notification. Head on into your app store, wherever that is, whether it's on Apple or Android and search for Anne Arundel County Public Schools. It's right there. It's the only one there. Hey, I wanted to follow up on that tax bill that's been working its way through the House of Delegates. While some supporters of the tax hike say that the expanding the sales tax will cost $2 a week for the average family, well, the numbers are in. The Budget Office says that that tax increase will net an additional $2.9 billion more per year to the state. Well, I did some quick math. There are 1,980,000 households in Maryland. Divide that into the $2.9 billion worth of additional revenue, and that works out to an additional $1,464.65 per year to each household. Divide that out by 52 weeks, and that is $28.17 per week, which is gas money for most people. Quite a difference from the proponent's suggestion of it only costing $2. The first hearing on that bill was held yesterday, and as expected, there was plenty of testimony against it, as well as protests out in the lawyer's mall. Actually, there's a really a sort of a catch-22 here as well. Let's say you've got a lawn care guy, and he may have to hire a bookkeeper now to handle the collection and remittance of the taxes. That's an extra cost to him, and he's got two choices. He can either eat it, or he can pass it on to the customer. If he passes on to the customer, well, the customer now is going to be paying even more taxes on top of the service. Plus, the landscaper who had to hire the bookkeeper to take care of the tax problem is now going to have to be paying a tax on the bookkeeper's fee for tracking the tax. Go figure that. Call your delegate, call your senator, tell them it's a bad idea. 
And finally, as we wrap up, the 8th Annual Annapolis Film Festival has announced their final slate of more than 70 films from over 25 countries. The festival is going to be held March 26th through 29th with screenings at Maryland Hall, Annapolis Elementary School, St. John's College, and Asbury United Methodist Church, which is a great place to watch a film, believe it or not. The opening night film, which is going to be on the 26th, that is going to be Military Wives by Peter Cataneo. Looking forward to that. You can get information and tickets at annapolisfilmfestival.com. Individual tickets will go on sale today. However, that's not the way to do it. If you are wanting to see more than one film, definitely get either a day pass or the full festival pass because it does have a lot of perks that go along with it. All right, that does wrap it up for the news today. Now, I do need you to hang tight because I do have, I wouldn't call it a rant, but I do have an important announcement coming up at the very end, sort of where I would normally put a rant if I was ranting. But it is an important announcement. It is a big policy change for Ion Annapolis, and you do need to hear that. If you are someplace where you can give us a rating or a review, please do that and let all your friends and family know about us as well. Other than that, hang tight. George Young is standing by with your local DMV weather right after this message from Solar Energy Services. Hey, Annapolis, Eastern Shore, and Anne Arundel County. My name's Rick Peters, and I'm the president of Solar Energy Services in Millersville, Maryland. Need a new job in the new year to help take you in a different direction? Maybe you aren't feeling fulfilled in your current job and want to be part of the excitement and growth of the clean energy industry. Consider coming to work for Solar Energy Services and give yourself a new career and fresh start at a company that not only offers competitive pay and benefits, but also cares about our employees as much as we care about our customers. That says a lot because we've been in business for over 40 years and we know how to provide five-star service. Visit solarsaves.net or call 410-923-6090 today. We are hiring immediately for solar installers, drafting specialists, and commercial project managers as we prepare for another great year. Are you up for the challenge? Apply today. Sunshine's a wasting. Sunshine, sunshine. Nothing else can make me feel so fine. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Tuesday, March 3rd. Yesterday was a nice warm start to the first work week of the new meteorological spring season and today will be no different with temps in the 58 to 64 degree range for afternoon highs, though clouds and off and on showers are expected throughout the day and into the overnight hours, possibly lasting into Wednesday morning as well before skies start to gradually clear with temps again near or just above the 60 degree mark on Wednesday before sunshine returns Thursday through Sunday with highs Thursday and Friday in the 50s with temps mid 40s to low 50s over the weekend. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there and be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching the Apple or Google App Stores for DCMDVA Weather and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather informed. Here's to the teacher who spends her weekend helping children who need a little extra attention. To the soldier who missed the birth of his baby while serving overseas. To the EMT working full-time and taking night classes. To the police officers and firefighters working long hours away from their families to keep our families safe. Here's to you, our hometown heroes. I'm Alan Hyatt, chairman and president of Severn Bank, and we know there are many heroes among us. Men and women who serve without expecting anything in return which is why we're honored to offer our Hometown Heroes program to educators, law enforcement officers, firefighters, first responders, healthcare workers, and military personnel. Whether you're opening a checking account or buying a new home, we're here to give back to you. Learn more about our Hometown Heroes program at SeverinBank.com. Severn Bank, here with you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. So many different stories in the news, and everyone has an opinion. Here's ours. Hey there, I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about a new policy that's gone into effect today officially, but actually it's sort of been around for about a week. But effective immediately, Ion Annapolis is going to be making a significant change to how we report crime in Annapolis as well as Anne Arundel County. Every day, the Annapolis and Anne Arundel County Police Departments make arrests. These arrests can be for minor crimes or the most heinous crimes imaginable. Some of these arrests are good arrests, and some are not so good arrests. 
And further down the line, there are prosecutable cases and non-prosecutable cases. And even further still, there is the verdict, guilty or not guilty. In the United States, there is a presumption of innocence. Because someone is charged with a crime does not necessarily mean that they committed that crime, nor does it mean that they were ever found guilty. Innocent until proven guilty. Over the past 10 years, we have been contacted by dozens of people that have had their names and photographs published in Ion Annapolis after an arrest. Some of them had the charges dropped. Some were found not guilty. Others were sent back to juvenile court after being charged as an adult. And others still were found guilty, served out their punishment, and are just really trying to get their lives together again. When these folks call us asking us to remove their photograph or article, we generally oblige. We even take it a step further and remove it from the various search engines that scrub Ion Annapolis each hour. Even if a convicted person receives a commutation, expungement, or pardon, Google lives on forever, and it can be devastating in any number of ways. Back in January of 2019 on the Maryland Crabs podcast, I spoke with a young man who was the victim of a botched police case, wrongly arrested for an attempted murder, lost a football scholarship to a Division I school, and potentially a promising NFL career. The judge in the case found him not guilty and stated that the case never should have been tried, but the damage was done. Expelled from school, no NFL team would take a look at him, and most heartbreaking of all to me, because of his unusual first name, he's not able to give his name to his new son. Innocent until proven guilty. So effective immediately, we will no longer be publishing the names and booking photos of arrested suspects. Plain and simple. If the law gives someone the presumption of innocence, it's only right that we do it as well. And believe me, it can be difficult at times. Take this syringe stabby guy. He was caught on video. It all seems very cut and dry. He may deserve all the vitriol that's been spewed his way. But legally, he is innocent until proven guilty. We will follow up on crimes that happen as we always do. And should someone be found guilty, we will publish that information if appropriate. But until then, as I've said, innocent until proven guilty. And why are we doing this? Well, very simple, because we feel it's the right thing. And that's what I'm thinking today. Please join Anne Arundel Medical Center Foundation and presenting sponsor First National Bank Saturday, April 25th in Annapolis at the AAMC Foundation's Denim and Diamonds Bash. The 2020 Denim and Diamonds Bash is an important opportunity to provide critical funding for vital health services, including adult and pediatric mental health and substance abuse, evaluation, care, and navigation. Denim and Diamonds is a wonderful evening under the stars, featuring fabulous cuisine, gourmet food trucks, silent auction, and dancing to the Reagan years, all to support expanding mental health and addiction care in our community. Tickets are on sale. To purchase tickets before they sell out, please visit aamcdenimanddiamonds.org. Special thanks to our platinum sponsors, Anne Arundel Dermatology, AAMC Medical Staff, Buck Distributing Company, Comcast, Event EQ, Main and Market, What's Up Media, and WRNR. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.